Hi, Rich here from Rich Craft Performance. Tonight, we're going to talk about oil pumps, in particular the ones on small block Chevys. Um, I promised the boy that I would blueprint his oil pump for him, and I figured, yeah, it's a great time to shoot a video. So I'm just going to talk about them for a quick sec, and then I'm going to show you the inside of one of these and a few tips and a few tricks about you know getting a little better oil pressure out of your vehicle. And so I'm going to start with. I reuse old oil pumps all the time and a lot of guys are you're crazy I've never seen enough wear inside a stock Chevy oil pump to warrant it changing on a mild performance motor if you're building something crazy you're spending a bunch of money on it of course put a new oil pump in it you'll just feel better but if you're building something budget in your backyard and you're trying to save a buck or two I'm gonna show you a few things to check on it and now this also applies when you get a pump, a brand new pump out of the box, I still recommend checking this because I've seen them brand new out of the box have the specs be off. And it doesn't sound like much, but those specs being off can be three to five PSI. And sometimes that's, you know, that's important. You just get that last little bit and it helps with the efficiency of the pump. And the more efficient you can make this pump, the more oil it's sent into the bearings instead of just losing it internally. So, a stock production pump like this one is just a M155 off that 383 my son's building is fine for your average street motor. I do not recommend going high volume pumps unless you have a more than stock capacity oil pan. I see guys do it all the time. They run a stock capacity oil pan, they rev the thing up and it pushes all the oil up into the valve covers. They don't have their drain backs machined out to get the oil back down to the crankshafts. And you can actually starve the bearings out pretty good and not even know it. Your oil pressure might not even fluctuate on the dash, but you are, you are starving it. So if you're building a big motor and you're putting a nice big fat oil pan on it, high volume pumps are great, okay? The um, downsides to high volume pumps, it's more load. On the distributor especially in something like a small block Chevy or a small block Ford I don't know if you've ever had a Ford apart they have a tiny little drive shaft that drives the thing they've been known to shear that's why when you buy a high volume pump they give you a hardened one when you buy a high volume pump for a Chevy they also give you a hardened one but I've never had a stock one fail either um, so up to about 450 me they, they say in the books that these things are good to 400 horsepower I've had them further than that. Tricking up the oil pressure, changing the spring, which I'll show you how to do in a second here. I'm just gonna move the camera so you don't have to look at my beautiful mug. And we're gonna set it up on the table and I'm gonna show you how to get into one of these things. But This was just the intro, get us started. Now let's get to it. Okay, so the camera's moved and we're gonna show you this little pump here. So, like I said, this is a melling replacement pump. They're a great little unit. Uh, I recommend melling pumps for pretty much anybody um for the at least the domestic market and i know they do a bunch in the in the uh in the import market too but they're a great pump cast made in the usa that's a pretty neat thing to see these days anything with a pushed in uh pickup tube it is recommended that you weld it okay so you're saying hey i don't have a welder at least for a small block shiv Pioneer does these little widgets, okay? And it literally bolts on, as you can see there, it would bolt onto those two bolts and it would hold the thing. So these aren't much money. See the part number there? If I can get it in front of the camera good enough. You see the part number? These things are great for her. You're doing a backyard. I've literally even welded them and not been particular enough and had them come off on our motors around here. I know my son had a motor that it never had any oil pressure polyps because he never ran it low on oil. But uh, we, we pulled it out uh, to replace it and we found the, the, the sump sitting in the pan and that was one that I had welded. So I always recommend welding them good. Before you weld them, you have to remove the piston and the spring. You can't just tack it on there, the heat it's been known to take the tension out of the spring 
and then you won't have as much oil pressure as was intended. So I thought I'd pre-loosen these, but we'll just grab a quickie ratchet, crack that one loose. These pumps are so simple inside. This is why I say I use them, I reuse them all the time because they are so simple and I've never had one with enough wear to matter. Now a lot of guys, they just run out, they put a new oil pump on, they have low oil pressure in their engine and so they pull her out, put a new pump in it. It's the first thing they think. It's never the oil pump's fault why your engine has low oil pressure. There's something else wrong. It has increased bearing clearances. It's got an internal leak somewhere. You can get a plug filter that can drive you nuts. Um, there, there's a ton of reasons. It's very rarely ever the oil pump's problem. The only ones I've ever seen is when the pressure relief actually sticks. Okay, because that's just a simple little piston. But you see, you see why? What's to go wrong in there? And now, these are pretty simple to check them. Let's pull some feeler gauge out here. I doubt I'll be able to find the one, right one on the spot, but we'll try anyways. These are uh, heavy duty mechanic feeler gauges, so they come complete with uh, diesel and grime all over them. So there's the guy we want. So these, the specs are, you look up the specs in your manual or online, they're all over the place. You literally just check them. Wow. I put two at once. Try to do that again. You literally just insert the gauge down the side here. And I feel by the tension on that, this one's good. I know this pump has no miles on it. This is just a quickie checkout because the boy was worried. He was about to put his motor together. Now, the most important clearance in these things is right here. If I can get a good angle on that. This clearance right here, and you simply just take something flat. This particular punch might not be a great idea, but we take something flat, and our maximum clearance is four thou. There's our four thou. They're happier around two, and I see I can't get a two, I can't get a four in there. And the other one that I had pulled out is the two thou. So she is, this one is snug. I am happy with the clearance. Now, if that's too deep, you literally take a piece of sandpaper. That's why this piece of aluminum's down here. Glass is preferable. If you have a chunk of glass, I have a window in the shop where I work that, uh, we call it the lapping window because it's done many an oil pump or many a flat surface. And if it's this clearance is, is too big, we simply take the gears out, which they just pop out once this plastic sleeves out. And we would do a figure eight pattern on the glass, okay? If you go too far, then you have to take the gears out. With the gears out, then you gotta do those. So I recommend just for your own sanity, not going too far, but this one's tight. We knew it would be. Now, the one thing I am gonna show you, I'm just gonna wipe this off. Handy dandy coverall rag. This is the pin. This is the pin right here for our oil pressure regulator spring. Okay, and you see it comes all the way through. So I've seen a lot of people wonder how do I get that out? Undo the four bolts. And I always bang it through from the, the same way it's gonna go back in. Probably gonna knock my camera off the table doing it this way. Couple more taps and we're out. Now when I pull this out, out comes our spring. Now these springs are rated and you can buy, especially for Chev's, Ford's, Chrysler's, the common stuff. Uh, Melling makes replacement springs, okay? The, um, the common one back in the day, they'll call it the Z28 spring, and it, it is um, 70 PSI. I don't always go the 70. My favorite is, it's hard to tell because this one's been bathing in oil for a while. 
This is a yellow one. This is my favorite spring. It's 58 PSI. More than enough for a 6, 6500 RPM engine. They recommend 10 pounds for every 1000 RPM you're turning. So the 58 PSI spring, only it doesn't limit the total pressure. If your bearing clearances are tight, this thing will open up all the way by 58 PSI. And if, you're you know, if the pump is still turning faster and your bearing clearances, it'll still go past that. That's just its, you know, kind of limit. But with hydraulics, there's no really slowing it down if you keep turning the thing faster. This is to try to limit it. So 58, you can buy these. We buy them in a five pack. They're, oh man, they're ridiculously cheap uh, through milling. I think we get like 10 bucks for a five pack. Phone ringing. Um, we get them 10 bucks for a five pack. They're pretty good. And like I was saying, we got to tap this little piston out, get it out all the way. They get stuck near the end where the, uh, where the thing is machined for the pin to go through. They end up getting stuck right in the end. So sometimes it can be a little cantankerous. I'm gonna pause the video for a second, go fight with this thing some more. Okay, and we're back. What had happened there is when they put the pin through, it created a little tiny burr in there where the pin had gone through. And I just had to reach in there and pick away that little burr to get my little piston out. Now, that's something you wanna check for. This also just basically, this one's got a little bit of a polished side. That's just from, that's normal wear. But what we're feeling for is any sharp edges. And if we feel anything, we'd take it to a piece of thousand grit. And you're not trying to reduce the diameter of this. You're just trying to take off the sharp outer edges so that this thing travels in here as smoothly as possible. Like I said earlier, the only time I've ever seen an oil pump fail is when this thing sticks. It's not a super common thing. It's usually caused by a little piece of grit. And a lot of times that I've seen it, it was caused by another part failing and introducing a piece of metal into this. So you already had problems before this failed. Now, it's another step. This is why we're on this little sheet of aluminum. Glass works better, like I said earlier. I use these automotive stickets because I grew up in a potty shop. So I always have these things around. You can get them at auto parts stores, you know, a little five pack. 400 grit is what they recommend, okay? And we just literally put it down on this and a figure eight pattern. I'm sorry if I'm shaking the camera. And we start to reveal what we have. Okay, so now we're starting to reveal. I got a bunch of work to do. I've never seen one of these flat ever. You see how we have, hopefully it shows up on camera. We have a shiny spot out here. We have a shiny spot over here. We got some shininess over here and we still haven't touched the middle. I don't know what it is. You can see how it was machined from melling. I've never had one come out flat ever. So we're gonna take another pause from the camera. I'm gonna get vigorous on this thing and I'm gonna sand on it a little more and I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. As you can see, there's just a little shadow of what was left. Now these are straight. I do not know why they're never flat when they were machined from the factory. I don't know whether it's the shape of it and after it takes a set after a few heat cycles in the car or whatever. I've literally never seen one flat. And that little extra bit of clearance between those gears and that dome in here could mean three to five PSI that I might need. Now, after I put this in the car, of course, we'll, you know, we, I usually run them on brake-in oil, um, roller cam or not, I like brake-in oil on a new motor. 
it just gives it a hope i use lucas stuff just because it's available but whatever you have available to yourself now after i've run the car i pay attention closely to the oil pressure whenever the car is running but i run the car pretty hard get it hot and i see what the oil pressure does and then even with the 58 pound spring or if you want to do a 70 sometimes we need to tweak our our viscosity or our oil like i usually start them on a 10 30 as i know which way to go if um if i need a little more you can bump them up to a 10 40 or even go as high as a 20 50. Um, another good tip for good oil pressure is to run them keep them cool keep your run a 160 thermostat 180 at the most because your oil temperature is usually about 30 degrees higher than your um, coolant temperature the more pressure you ask the pump to put out that's why i run a 58 pump pound spring not a 70. the more pressure you ask this pump to put out the more heat it'll create so keeping your coolant temperature down helps keep the oil down helps keep your oil pressure up and then you don't need to increase the viscosity you're not you don't have as much pumping loss and etc etc but to finish this pump which i'll just do i'll do it off camera i can explain it pretty good would wash it up really good especially after you've done any sanding you don't want any of that grit left behind so i'm going to spend about 20 20 minutes hosing this thing off blowing it off i will reassemble put my spring in there hold it in with a screwdriver reinsert my pin then throw a little bit of white grease into here before you put it on it'll just help it pick up oil for the first time way better so hopefully this helps if i missed anything uh chuck it down in the comments and i'll try to i'll try to get back to you uh, if you like this kind of video press like and subscribe we'll talk to you soon